Hi, I'm Radmar, and today I'll be reading to you about St. John Chrysostom from Stories of the Saints by Kerry Wallace and Pictures by Nick Thornborough. When John was a young man, he decided he wanted to be a hermit. He moved to a cave in the desert outside Antioch, where he spent two years standing up almost all the time, barely slept, and memorized whole pages of the Bible. But his body couldn't stand this treatment, so he got sick and had to return to Antioch to get help. Back in Antioch, he became a priest and started to speak at a cathedral called the Golden Church. People loved to listen to him so much that they gave him the nickname Chrysostom, which means golden tongue. But John was skeptical of their compliments. People applaud my sermons, he said. Then they run off to the horse races and applaud even more for the jockeys. His preaching was so popular that the people of Constantinople made him their archbishop. But the city was full of corruption and intrigue, and not everyone there liked the things John had to say. Just like Jesus, John spent a lot of time talking about poor people. What good is it if the table for Mass is full of gold goblets, he said, when your brother is dying of hunger? He didn't host fancy parties like the other bishops. Instead, he started to spend the riches of the church on hospitals for the poor. He told priests that they shouldn't keep servants. He put lazy monks to work. And he spoke out against the elaborate clothes of the rich. It is madness to fill closets with clothes, he said, when people created in the image of God are trembling naked in the cold. The Empress Eudocia was insulted by this. Her husband, the Emperor Arcadius, was already angry with John for stopping his plan to kill some monks who had displeased him. So they conspired with a jealous archbishop, Theophilus, to invent charges against John. Then they sent their soldiers to arrest John and throw him into prison. But when the people of Constantinople heard that John had been arrested, they took to the streets and surrounded the palace, threatening to burn it down. And that night, an earthquake hit the city. That changed Eudocia's mind, but only for a little while. It wasn't long before she ordered an artist to make a statue of her out of pure silver. She put it up in the city for everyone to see. That statue, John preached in one of his sermons, is a foolish waste. Eudocia was furious, but she remembered what the people had done the last time she locked John up. So, this time... She banished him. John had to walk for 70 days to get to the Caucasus Mountains where Eudocia had ordered him to live in exile. But even in exile, John kept writing letters to the churches in the cities saying all the same things he always had. Because John was still causing them trouble, even from so far away, the emperor ordered that John be sent even farther into exile to the ends of the empire. Old and sick, John was forced to walk miles on foot in driving rain, freezing cold, and unbearable heat. John was too weak for the journey. He collapsed near a chapel and was taken inside. Glory be to God for all things were his last words before he died. And today, almost no one remembers the jockeys people cheered for when John was alive or the emperor who sent him into exile. But we still read John's writings more than any other leader from his place and time. The end. Thanks for listening.